music. My name is David Matheson, and I'm here to co-present with... Uh, Catherine Matheson, Money. And we're going to be talking about being well and well-being, what prostate cancer patients and those next to them say. A little bit in the background. Our aim is to help healthcare professionals better understand... The perspective of patients and partners, family members, about being well and well-being. And what questions patients and those close to them would like to be asked about their quality of life. Our methods... Well, we uh, undertook an anonymous survey circulated via social media. Uh, so far we have collected data for 38 patients and 16 partners or family members. We carried out some remote one-to-one -one telephone interviews, seven with patients and one with the partner or a patient. We we'll analysed the comments by constant comparative me method. And today we're presenting some descriptive statistics. So here we have the poster that we've used, and you can see the link to our survey, which we'll repeat at the end. The initial results. First of all, for treatment, 38 patients, and you can see how they're spread across the Venn diagram between the various treatments. You can see the overlaps and so on. And patients and family, 16 of them. Very similar kind of spread although the, only, the one with internal radiotherapy also had external beam radiotherapy. Uh, we asked about the stage of diagnosis and we found that most of the patients had defined their diagnosis as being early stage, uh, 66%, advanced, 16%, and spread to another part of the body, 18%. Well, the partner or family was commenting it found that the patient identified the patient in five cases as being early stage, 31%, advanced, 6 and spread to other parts of the body, 3 And in two cases, the partner or family didn't know. This is a view of the quality of life as the patients assessed it since treatment. And as you can see, we have 76% of them who felt that the quality of life was good or very good. And at 16%, thought it was not good or really not good. And oddly enough, 8% weren't sure. Now, the kind of things that people felt about their quality of life could be encapsulated as still struggling with tiredness and mental health issues, being limited by urinary needs and problems, erectile dysfunction, the stress of PSA results and awaiting the PSA results, and also social isolation and depression due to COVID-19, which was a fear that they had. Um, but that was at the beginning of the lockdown. In terms of well-being and being well, one patient said, having no specific unwellness or symptoms, I've been able to do whatever I usually do or want to do without concern. Uh, another you know, statement was having no aching joints, man boobs, sore boobs and lethargy, and they would want to have a full night's sleep without getting up two or three times for a pee and then sleeping fitfully. And also going out without having to worry about where toilets are and making sure they have enough pads for the day. Feeling phys well physically and still working, not now because of COVID, is what maintains his mental health, according to one partner. Uh, not having to drink before car journeys, etc. And also not having back and or hip pain was what it meant to be well. And for these clinicians and healthcare staff should ask, how are you coping with the treatment and the side effects? Uh, also, how are you happy with how you feel physically, mentally and emotionally? What's a typical good day and a typical bad day? Are you satisfied with the quality of life? Let's see what can be done to improve it. So thank you for your attention. This is a quick look at the qualitative results from our survey. You can see life featured prominently. So for more information, that's where you can contact or you can go onto this website and find our survey here. So thank you very much for your attention.